So hello, every hello everyone. Welcome to listen to our presentation. Thanks for welcoming us. Uh, first of all, I would like to introduce uh, myself and my research partner. I am Mohamed Kök from Turkey, and uh, I am working as a research assistant in the English language teaching department. And also, I'm a PhD candidate. And also, my friend Burcu uh, is a research assistant and also a PhD candidate in the same uh, in the same department. So we are working in the English language teaching department. That's why we choose this research topic. As you see, the English language teaches cognition uh, in intercultural communicative competence. So. Uh, let us see the content of today, first of all. Uh, first of all, I'm going to be talking about the intercultural communicative competence. So I'm going to be touching upon the components of it and the place of it in the EFL settings and also the literature review. So what has been done in the uh, in the EICC uh, arena lately. So, and then uh, I will move on to talk about our research topics as well as as well as the research questions. And then we will mainly focus on the methodology section. So how we collected data. So what kinds of instruments we use and also how did we uh, analyze the uh, data. And my friend will go on with the findings as well as the results. So at the end, we will give and propose some uh, implications regarding ICC. So intercultural communicative competence uh, refers to the uh, knowledge, skills, and motivation to, imp uh, to interact with the members of other people coming from different uh, linguistic or cultural backgrounds. Therefore, we have three important actually uh, underpinnings, knowledge, motivation, and skills. So knowledge refers to the uh, the, let's say, requiring the information from the uh, cultures of uh, different members of people. So motivation refers to the desires of students to get involved to the uh, intercultural communicative settings. And also skills uh, refers to the uh, any speaking behavior of communicators uh, used effectively and appropriately. So. In order to improve intercultural communicative competence, students need to, uh, let's say, improve their competency based on the components of ICC. So what teachers do in the classroom should ad uh, address the components of ICC. So what are they? Basically, ICC you know, uh, involves attitudes, knowledge, interpretation, uh, skills of discovery and social interaction, and also critical cultural awareness. So actually, nowadays students generally have the knowledge level and also the skills level, uh, level but they, uh, they lack social interaction and also they lack critical cultural awareness, which is, uh, I think, more you know, important than the other levels because students uh, show lackness in terms of how to critically, you know, uh, judge or critically analyze the cultures based on certain criteria, not only um, not only the other cultures, but also their cultures as well. So they need to um, take into account perspectives, processes, and products, and also different kinds of applications uh, to improve, you know, their cu critical cultural awareness. So they need to actually uh, critically analyze these procedures. So what about the place of ICC in EFL settings? Actually, uh, as we all know, language learning is a social process. So, uh, okay. So ICC uh, um, language learning is a social process that involves not into, you know, social linguistic paradigms, but also it involves social cultural situations. Therefore, uh, as Atkin says, students, you know, and uh, and culture through the language learning. So, if students lack of intercultural communicative competency, so they they won't they won't be able to uh, use uh, the language appropriately. So they they will be something missing in their language proficiency and language use. Therefore. Uh, 
as in the, you know, as it is says in the literature, English belongs no longer to English countries. So all over the world, the majority of people speak English uh, and the non-native speakers of English, you know, outnumber the, na uh, the, the number of the native speakers. Therefore, uh, we need to integrate intercultural communicative competency in our lessons. And also CFR, uh, highly, you know, uh, suggest the use and the integration of ICC in the AFL settings. So when we look at the uh, literature, we see that there are a number of, you know, complaints about uh, um, uh, voiced by the teachers. And generally the previous studies highlighted that, you know, the teachers have limited content and lack of materials. And also they have lots of workloads to integrate ICC and also uh, limited resources, crowded classrooms are the, you know, main barriers to integrate uh, intercultural communicative competence. So in our context, uh, Turkey, as you know, is a country where the English is a foreign language. So we can't, you know, uh, use the generally English outside the classroom. So classrooms are the main places where we integrate and use the la language most of the time. Therefore, uh, in our study, we wanted to examine and see uh, what the EFL teachers, English language teachers, uh, what they know, what they believe, and how they, uh, you know, uh, employ intercultural communicative applications in their classrooms. Therefore, we benefited a qualitative study. So we recruited six English language teachers. Uh, let's see. So the, uh, this is our research questions. What is the EFL teacher's cognition in intercultural communicative competence? So what are their knowledge levels? What are their beliefs? And how do they integrate? If they integrate, how do they sell? So for the methodology, uh, this is a case study. So we conducted the study with six English language teachers working in the uh, National Minister of Education. So we recruited um, two uh, teachers from each circles, from primary school, uh, from secondary school, from high school. So for each, we recruited uh, experienced teachers and also novice teachers to see and compare, uh, is there any changes? So for this aim, we used a semi-structure interview protocol. So we developed actually, a, um, a, uh, let's say semi-structure interview protocol. So it has two main uh, um, sessions. So the first questions related to the descriptive ones, such as age, gender, teaching experience, et cetera, teaching region. And this, uh, the second uh, type of questions were related to the open-ended questions. So. Uh, first of all, we uh, we read the uh, you know existing literature, and then we uh, formulated the open-ended questions, and then we uh, we gathered the expert opinions about the questions, and then at the end we have um, three different uh, you know levels. So uh, we have six questions to investigate their knowledge level. We have four questions to reveal their beliefs regarding ICC, and also 10 questions regarding their practices in the AFL classrooms. So how did we carry out our research? Uh, we use Zoom meetings, so the semi-structure protocol was conducted online, and also part um, we uh, we conducted our research in Turkish and then transcribed the answers in English. Uh, we didn't want to create a language barrier, so they uh, they felt relaxed. And then we recorded the meetings and transcribed, and then we made 
analysis via content analysis. So we benefited from thematic analysis. And then we got into a related reliability. So different researchers, um, uh, let's say, rated the reliability. And then at the end, we have, uh, we have three different categories. We have three different themes regarding knowledge, beliefs, and also practices. So now my friend will go on talking about the findings of the research as well as the conclusion. Thank you, Mohammed. Um, so as he mentioned, we have the categories of the analyses. The first one was about the knowledge. So the first category of the questions were trying to uncover their knowledge. And as you see in blue, um, our results indicated that the teachers have limited awareness and narrow conceptualization of ICC, plus their cultural descriptions. When we ask them their personal definitions, uh, descriptions of culture, they were mainly static. So they were referring either to the language or the flags, the religion, but they were not giving us other examples from the language itself related to the culture. And they all um, reported that they hadn't received any pre previous training on ICC. And we wanted to highlight here that uh, especially the experienced ones didn't have anything you know, regarding ICC. The new ones, the novice teachers, they actually attended webinars or seminars upon graduation. So it shows us that the importance have been, you know, started to be attached to ICC, but in the past it was something that was neglected. And these are the quotations that we got from the uh, interviews, as you see. Um, it's important because we need to be respecting others. Someone said, I haven't even heard the term. And it was really nice because with this teacher, she's an amazing teacher, a phenomenal teacher. She has lots of followers on Instagram. She does great things with kids, but she hadn't heard about it. And she said, hmm, that sounds something really interesting. So I will be checking and I will try to adapt it in my classes. So such research and interviews also, you know, contribute to that. How about the beliefs? Um, as I'm going to mention and refer, refer to the lit, uh, literature as well in the discussion part, the participants actually hold really positive beliefs and attitudes. So they say, this is something important. This is something that we should be integrating. It can be you know, uh, advantageous in terms of contributing to uh, students' language proficiency, acculturation, and they also mentioned the global citizenship. So that is a skill that is required to, if you want your students to be global citizens. And they said by using ICC, uh, we might expose our students to authentic language use, which is something that we all uh, need. And um, that could also uh, lead to overcoming the bias among the students, plus that could improve their uh, motivation to language learning that today in the morning in the panel that was also mentioned, right? We need students to be motivated to learn the language or to be engaged in language learning. How about the practices? That is the tricky part. So their knowledge is limited, they highly want to do it. So let's see if they were able to uh, in implement such practices. So the results showed us that um, the teachers didn't have quite um, a variety of practices. It was limited. Uh, when, when we asked them if they were implementing, most of them said yes. But then, of course, we had the further question. So can you give us the examples, right? What were you doing in the classroom? And the examples that they were providing were related to the demonstration, you know, just informative passages. They were bringing some of them. I, I can't say all of them, but some of them were bringing texts to the classroom and they were showing like, this is how the British people are doing it. This is how, how it is done, you know, in Japan, in different countries. So. There was a variety of the passages demonstration, but it was only limited to that. Um, 
as most of them working in the state schools, they were saying that the materials were inadequate, inadequate, they were limited. And in some places, the practices were not so wide because of the technological facilities. So the, the practices cannot be only adhered to the people's knowledge. Okay, maybe they know, maybe they can learn about it, but then they need the infrastructure to be able to you know, put those things into practice. And other teachers were referring to curriculum, plus the assessment, because we were also asking about their practices related, okay, to teaching, plus the assessment. And they were saying that I, you know, they weren't able to incorporate such things into their assessment because they had the top down, you know, uh, exams. Uh, some of their concerns were related to the parents and the context that they were, you know, teaching English. They had some conservative parents who would raise issues about why, you know, okay, um, we have our own culture. All right, you said the students need to learn the English or, you know, a target language and international language. And now you're talking about the culture. What's next? Change, change converting to another, you know, religion. Um, such things were concerns. And then the support or no support from the school administrators uh, were the issues that were raised by our teachers in terms of their practices. I can't move. This one, right? Okay. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, how about the discussion? So the findings uh, of our study uh, were in line with the previous studies. Teachers, most of the time, have the positive attitude and beliefs. Uh, but in the end, have the inadequacy in terms of their practices, in terms of their implementation. There, uh, there was another study, again in Turkey, with a large you know, number of participants, and they showed the positive attitude, but did not frequently carry out the practices, unfortunately. And the barriers mentioned in our study were related to curriculum, workload, materials, and the time as a constraint, and they were also in line. Um, how about the top-down assessment? They said, you know, there should be uh, further research in terms of how to test and assess intercultural communicative competence. So although they are aware that the culture is important, should be integrated, but they lacked the knowledge about how to assess such things in their classes. Uh, from our study, these were the things that were not mentioned previously in other studies, the conservative perspectives of parents and school administrators, plus the you know technological facilities that I've men mentioned, especially in the rural areas. Turkey is a big country. Um, West is not the same as East. You know, North is not the same as the South. Uh, when doing such studies in, in different contexts too, I'm sure you would agree with me that the, the facilities that teachers, you know, have differ quite a lot. Um, so what we are discussing here is that there's definitely the need for ICC training, not only in pre-service language teaching uh, uh, departments, but also in service ELT, you know, uh, programs or uh, trainings. Um, Ministry of Education, Ministry of National Education in Turkey, I forgot to mention Turkey, not Turkey. Um, that actually it's doing quite a lot about the in-service training, but this is something that is kind of neglected. So we, we're hoping that when we turn this into a paper, uh, we can share it with the authorities and hopefully they might take this into consideration. Um, so our pre-service language teachers in other studies also like showing us that they are conscious, but um, their understanding was quite limited, quite poor because of their deficiency, right, uh, of ICC in the program. Um, as we promised, here are the implications. Training is the must, right, for pre-service and in-service ELT teachers. Um, and the focus, you know, we said there should be a training, but the large quantity of that training should be spared on how to integrate ICC, 
not just what is ICC, why ICC is important, but how to integrate. Plus, the materials should be diversified, uh, the materials that can be used in the language classrooms to, you know, movies, documentaries, TV shows, as I mentioned in my previous speech. Um, there is the technology, there is the Netflix, there is the TikTok, right? So why not integrate such things to diversify the materials? Um, the fourth point is quite important as a result of our study that we need to be uh, putting efforts in raising parents and school administ administrators awareness regarding ICC. We can't, we can't leave the teachers alone in that. We should be, you know, um, raising awareness of other parties around so that teachers can, you know, easily uh, do their jobs. PD events, um, once they are teachers, once they are, you know, working, there are always changes in the field. So if there are seminars, webinars in these days, right, as we have the technology and the workshops related to uh, ICC and, of course, other important matters in the field. And um, we thought that promoting exchange programs in K-12 settings would contribute to this a lot. Uh, then they would be seeing other cultures, they would be exposed to those cultures, and then the, the respect for those cultures uh, might be uh, improved. And there's one takeaway for us, the researchers. I'd like to read it for you. Even a properly structured system of intercultural competence-oriented English language education wouldn't suffice. Why? Unless it was backed up by a broader research-driven educational philosophy and a multidisciplinary pol policy embracing openness to other cultures. I hope you agree with us and with the um, scholar here. Thank you very much for your attendance. Any questions?